Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about when I had a little night on Blobby Clusters. My name's Rob and you're watching Seven Skies Astro. Now, they started off, I thought, this time of year, we get a lot of globulars just coming up into view from where I am. And there's really some nice globulars. So I started off, I've done an image capture of M3. Now, I used my Skywatcher 72 ED with a 0.8 reducer on it. Now, that gave me... A focal length of 344 millimeters, and I had my MC Pro 533 on it with a L Pro light pollution filter. Now, this was first light with my Skywatcher GTI, the little mount I've got. So, I've done 30 one minute subs of each globule cluster and I started off with the M3. Now this one is in Canna's Venactisi. Now this was actually Charles Messier's first uh, discovery in the 3rd of May of 1764 I believe. And it, it, it was it was just a misty patch to him obviously and it was first resolved by William Herschel. In 1784 and he he it's it's 90 light years round and 34,000 light years away it contains over half a million stars and it has the the most variable stars of any globular cluster so next up I moved along to m5 in Serpens now, this was discovered by the German Gottfried Krisch in 1702. The distance is around about 24,000 light years away, and its radius is 80 light years. It was res uh, resolved by Herschel again in 1791. It's receding from us around about 50 kilometers a second, which is a fair old clip. So that's what I've done in that one. Again, it was just 30 one-minute subs. Now, I did, did that every five, just to try and keep the noise down a little bit. And I've done that on all of them, by the way. Next up, I went into M53 and NGC5053. Now, this these two globular clusters, and when you see the image of car, Again, just 30 minutes. You'll see one is so much fainter than the other. Now, these two are interacting, they believe, and there's a tidal trail going between the two galaxy, uh, globular clusters, rather. Now, they are 60,000 light years from the galactic centre and around about 58,000 light years from us. So it's almost the same distance. It's very metal poor uh, globular clusters, and they reckon it was from an interaction when the Milky Way was forming. It was the dwarf galaxy, and it was stripped from it. And because the two globulars are surrounded by almost a halo, but obviously, there's nothing like that at uh, us amateurs would, would say, I would imagine. Yeah, so that, that's, that's what that was. And if you look, it, it, it's the contrast between the two is uh, quite interesting. They were also um, discovered by Joan Elliot Bode in 1775, who was a German astronomer. Next up, I switched over to the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules. Called Messier 13. 
again, just 13, uh, 30 minutes of subs, just 30 subs. Now, this one, this was actually discovered by Edmund Halley in, in 1764. Now, it's 22,000 light years distant, and we can easily see it with your eye on the dark sky. If you look at the Keystone Asterism, and you'll see it there. Now, the radius is 84 light years, and in that just 84 light years, we have over half a million stars. And when you look at it, it really is quite a, a, a beautiful cluster, especially if you can try and get the star colours to come out. Now, in 1974, you read about telescope sent off a message to the Gobbio Cluster M13 saying, here we are, and the rest of it, copies of our DNA. So they will get that in, say, 22,000 years if the Gobbio Cluster still hasn't moved away because when they sent it, they wasn't quite sure of if they'd get it. Just a strange one, a little bit of uh, a ticket of information for you. And finally, I finished off with M92 in Hercules again. It's like it's like the poor man's M13, which you'd probably be doing a little bit of the service. Now, this was discovered by Johan Elert Bold again, and that was in 1777. This distance is 26,700 light years away, and its radius is around about 109 light years. He's reckoned there's over 330,000 stars, so it's a bit poorer than the Hercules one, obviously. But it is approaching us at over 110 kilometres per second. So keep your eye out for that one. It just might whiz past us. So that was it. I've done four hours' worth of imaging just to capture the different globular clusters. I hope you find this entertaining. I certainly enjoyed it just looking at them and seeing the differences between them, the wild field of view. So that's it for this one. A nice little short one for you. Little images, but i say globular nice. So that's it for me. If you haven't subscribed, please consider giving me a subscription and hit that little bell so you can get more content from me. And if you're an existing subscriber, I thank you so much. I really do appreciate you all. So on to the next one, and I'll see us again soon. So be safe, be well, and clear skies.